If you clicked this video by accident or this is your first time on my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, it is great to see you again. Today, I have a good variety of five envelopes to open. One of these, this middle one, being from Japan. So I'm very excited to get into these envelopes, open all these envelopes, show off all the cards that I ordered, and then I'll put them away in binders. And I have some talking points to go through while we go through the binders. So we'll start out with this first envelope. So like always, I will show down below if I paid more than a dollar. If it was less than a dollar, I'm not going to put any extra notes about it down below, but I'll show the conditions on what I ordered and what I actually received. So it looks like we have a nice thick pack of cards here. So this is fine putting a bunch of cards in the same sleeve, but just be wary when you start putting more than like, I would say like the loose sleeves, you can fit like three or four, and then most sleeves you can fit about two. When you start stuffing them, you actually start bending the corners. I don't really care that much about bending the corners because I'm not planning on getting these graded. These are going right into the binders. Oh, shoot. I can't even pull this out without revealing. There we go. All right, I've already revealed two cards, but we'll start with those later. Oh, we have the Wo Chin EX. It actually has some nice color to it. I remember when I'm still playing the, the card game online, I tried making this deck work, and, you know, it's all right, but um, if they, what is it, if they put Manaphy or something, what is it? So deck the 60 damage to one of your opponent's bits for each pro's prize, yeah. I think it would be Manaphy, so if they have a Manaphy, then that attack doesn't do anything, which is kind of depressing, but it could be a nice game cleanup. We have the Ting Lu EX, that curse land, kind of an ugly full art, but I do like the background. The background looks cool, just Ting Lu looks kind of random there. Okay, the condition on this one is much better than the Wo Chin for sure. And oh, those are actually Paldea Evolved cards, which you'll look at that. We have the Knackly from Paldea Evolved. So it actually works out that I'm getting some Paldea Evolved. Dang, I like that. Everything is hollow in the eyes except for the Knackly itself, which is really cool. That is a beautiful card. Let me know if you like the Knackly line. I, I kind of like it. It's simple, it's a rock type, it's kind of cool. We have the Bramblin. Did get teased about this one. This is such a cute artwork. Just all the Bramblins scattered about. Bramblin, 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 Bramblin. I don't know if there's any of the evolution. I don't see any. And then we already saw the Ultra Ball. This is nice. Reverse Hollow. This is for Scarlet and Violet Bay. So it looks like all those were pulled that I evolved. Except for this. So I think this might have been the time where I got all the remaining Reverse Hollows that I needed for Scarlet and Violet Base. And then if they had any other cards that I needed for my sets. Um, if you weren't aware, my goal this year is to collect all the sets that came out in 2023, and then I'm also working on one older set, so. Oh, another one of these. Very nice and useful, and oh, I guess they glued it? Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, my thumb all sticky. Let's get in here. Okay. I think that's it. Is it just the Crocolore? Dang, I sent all that just for a Crocolore? Okay, I know I for sure I didn't pay a dollar or over a dollar for this one, so... That is one that I need for Scarlet and Violet Base. Sweet. And now we get into the Japanese envelope, which is really nice. Usually getting stuff from Japan. Usually getting stuff from Japan is very well packaged. Let's uh, cut this really quick. There we go. And we'll get right into there. Oh, ooh, I, uh, I completely forgot about this order. I'm going to be honest. This, is, uh, this one was off of eBay. Let's pull these out. Looks like they added a couple extra cards for backing. But we have, so what's crazy is my favorite number is five, so the Curlia playing card with the number five is amazing. ki ru ri a ki -ria. And then we have the back, which is a Kyogre. Okay, and what year? Oh, 2003, that's crazy. 21 years old. And then we have some Japanese, oh, that's Scarlet and Violet, two, one, and we just have some bulk as backing, so that's nice. Got get to add another Curlia to my collection, so get to bust out that binder, which is nice. Have another one of these shippingshieldus.com. Maybe these. I wonder if you can get a bunch of these for cheap. Maybe this is the way to go. I feel like it would make your letters way more though. And luckily, these are all facing backwards, so I can just put these face down and go right into it. We have a Caparaja, Caparaja, Caparaja EX. This is also from Paldea Vault, so we're getting more and more Paldea Vault. And the Belly Bowl EX, getting all the double rares. I like Belly Bowl as a Pokemon, pretty cool. I believe that is Iona's signature Pokemon besides the, the Magnemites and her hair. We have the Jacques, nice reverse holo. We have the Defiance Ban, okay, getting all those, dang, that's a lot of shimmer. That light is very strong. We have the Coquaval EX, oh wow, five band graphics, holding it down. 
Yeah, I haven't really seen any cool cable decks, I'm gonna be honest. And the final card is a Gru oh, the Grusha, a beautiful special illustration art rare with the Starlies in the front. And that might be all the Pokemon in this one. That is a beautiful artwork, little tick at the top. But, oh, shoot, there's actually some bends going on. Now I'm curious at what I ordered this in. And that is also Paldea Evolved, so. Uh, we have one more letter. Let's do it. We save the best for last. We have an Arvin and a Card Saver 1. And then they applied a little bit of... Oh, they did the interesting team bag method with the Card Saver. I might actually have to adapt that. That was pretty pretty nifty. All right. Uh, oh, shoot. Okay, I'm just going to take that one and then go like this. We have the Arvin. This one might even be over a dollar. Arvin is used in so many decks right now, and it's a really useful card. Really useful card in the game. Oh, we have the Skeledurge EX Special Illustration Rare. We have a Skeledurge, and are there any other Pokemon in this? Or is it just a peaceful walking down the street shopping? That might just be it. I really like this. Let's look at the texture there. Beautiful texture all around, all kind of just kind of grooving with the features. That is also Paul Day Evolved. Shoot, we're racking up Paul Day Evolved. And we have the Chi Yu EX. A gorgeous card by Akira Igawa. And yeah, that is just amazing. The sun coming down makes it look like fire, but it's in the water. It's just a gorgeous artwork. You can see the texture just all glimmering down on the Chi Yu. So that's also Paul Day Evolved. So got a bunch of reverse hauls that I needed, and then a bunch of Paul Day Evolved. And one second. So we're doing the Curlia Binder, Scarlet and Violet Base, and then I also recently ordered a Paldea Evolved Vault X 12 Pocket Binder. So now I can start putting cards away in Paldea Evolved, so I'm not just throwing stuff in my temporary binder. So now I have binders for all of that. So I'm gonna put all these cards in my apps and everything, and then we'll start going into the binders and go through the docking points. Okay, so here's the deal. I have a lot of cards to put in this Paldea Evolved Binder. I'm not gonna bore you guys with the entire video of me putting all of those in. So what I'm gonna do is I have my list of talking points and I'm gonna put cards away in the binder until I run out of talking points and then I'll end it there. And then if I'm feeling up to it, I'll do a quick just pan of my Paldea, Vibe, Paldea Evolved binder and where it stands. So I'm gonna start out with the Curlia binder and the first talking point, I'm gonna be talking about anime first and then all the random topics after that. So we will start out with My Hero Academia and I am, I finished season five and I'm like half almost done with season six. So I am on the final stretch to be ready for when final when season seven drops. Can't remember exactly when it drops. I think it's sometime in the spring. But the show, season five is a little rough around the edges. And then at the end, it finished strong with the My Villain Academia and basically just the villain side of everything. And seeing their perspectives, their origin stories, of course, the origin of Shigaraki Tomura. And it was... Honestly, there was some great stuff going on. It was getting me pretty excited. And yes, I did save a spot for this other playing card. So now I have the Seven of Diamonds Curlia and the Five of Clubs. So still don't know where that's all blank. I might have to upgrade to a full-on binder because I'm still missing the Japanese one of this one because this Curlia binder is filling up quick. And I'm still missing the other two from Scarlet and Violet. So, or from Paldean Fates. There we go. Now we can get into the Scarlet and Violet binder. But yes, finished season five. It was it was decent, but season six starts off super strong. Oh my gosh. They they let you know right off the bat, like the pacing is crazy. This this is a fight. This is a war. This is a battle that we are all fighting. This was like no joke. It man, I I was not ready for the battle, and they just threw me right into the front lines. It was amazing. A lot of good fights, a lot of sadness, a lot of cool moments. You just see a lot of people, you know, rise to the occasion. You see where the gaps are at, and man, it's... And you see some heroes that you haven't really seen in action, and there was a few moments that got me pretty emotional because, you know, things... Oh, still waiting on the Tatsu gear. I really, I, sh I think I do have that one ordered. I'm pretty sure I have that one ordered. And, uh, but season five ends, then season... Or, sorry, I talk about season five. Season six, the fighting is ongoing, and then that fighting ends, and then it's kind of like midway through the season... And then you have a massive like prison break. And I know it's to kind of build up either for the end of the season or next season. It looks like it's going to be more of a build up for next season because I don't know. I don't think they can fully close this out in the amount of remaining episodes that they have. Okay, I do have another order because these, this, I'm not going to be getting all of them filled in today's video. 
So I'm very much looking forward to that. And I'm currently on the moment where it's more keeping up with the Todorokis because, you know, they got a lot of family issues and you learn about the identity of one of the family members. And yeah, it's, uh, I can't wait to kind of get through this part, finish season six, and then just wait. And then I can start watching other shows. I want to watch Frieden. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. And then my sister has convinced me to add my spy family to the list. So I'll show you my updated list of anime that I plan to watch. I did have one anime on there, Made Sama. My sister said it was a little on the weird side, so I actually took it off, so I'm not planning on watching that one. But once again, if there's any really good anime that you recommend, please let me know. And if more than one of you re have recommended something to me, then I'll probably give it a watch, honestly, or just tell me why you like it. Man, this binder is so close. I think maybe within the next order or two, I should have this one complete, and then I can do a complete set video for this binder, which will be exciting. Now we have the Vault-X. So just as big as the Ultra Pro, but it's not leather bound, but I still like the Vault-X. It feels nice on the inside and it's a little bit more affordable. So I can always appreciate that. And you know, it's a new binder when I'm freaking pulling out the plastic. So I did watch the most recent episode of Solo Leveling. I know once again, I'm not gonna try to do any major spoilers, but the main character is just on another level and I'm not trying to like do be punny or anything like that. It is, oh my gosh. It is, it's so good, the battling and like the the cliffhangers, like it's one of those moments where you're watching it week to week and then you just envy anybody that can binge watch it in the future. So all of you that are waiting for it to finish, you're very smart. The actual next episode is going to be a recap episode, which I feel like, oh, it's so soon to have a recap episode, but a lot has happened. And I just love the gamisms of everything. Like, I, I don't know, I just like it, like... How Sword Art Online and like other, and like the one arc from Hunter x Hunter, the, uh, what is it, Greed Island, like they had the little game mechanics and all that stuff. And like, oh, okay, that's cool. But this show, just the way that it does it, I think it's much better and well handled. And the main character, it's so rare for me to have like a main character that I true, like they're the, my favorite character on the show. Like I always usually like end up, end up liking a side character or like one of the mentors better. But the fact that the main character is my favorite character on the show, I think speaks volumes. It's really good. Uh, we did, okay, so that's, that's anime talk. Once again, let me know if you have any good anime recommendations. I'm always open for trying new anime. I tried, I don't really get to watch too much during the week, but then on the weekends I can usually like, you know, do t 10, 15 episodes of something. So unless I'm like traveling or doing something, but oh shoot, with this pineco, I actually ran out of sleeves. So now I need to get some sleeves. Wow. I'm going to go get some. All right, well, it looks like definitely after this video, I'm gonna have to order some more sleeves because these premium sleeves, I only have a couple hundred left and doing one of these binders, like it ends up being a lot of cards and a lot of sleeves because I do sleeve every single card that goes in here just for, uh, I guess, continuity or like uniformity, I guess. Uh, we did recently try a shrimp restaurant. So there's one nearby and it's really close to where we live. It's probably like the second or third closest restaurant to us. So in my head, I'm like, I feel like we're obligated to try it because it is so close. But it's one of those places that you can look at it and be like, it's probably not going to be good. But I wanted to try it anyway. We went and tried. They're known for their shrimp. We probably should have just got one of the, like their shrimp bowls and bread or something like that. But we ended up getting like some shrimp mac and cheese and then I think some fish. And then that might have been it. And it was just very, very average. So let me know if you have any of those places near where you live where... They look average, and then you went to go eat it, and you confirmed that it was, in fact, average. So, it I guess it would have just bothered me if somebody came to visit us and be like, oh, how's that place? And then you literally say, oh, I've never been when it's like a five-minute walk from you. But that's just how I am. I mean, I guess you shouldn't have to go to every single place to try it or not. But I do like to go out and try new foods and everything. So, that's probably just me being me. So at work last week, once again, there was a vendor that's trying to hopefully gain our business. And they brought tamales and cookies. So there was one day where I brought lunch and I didn't even have to eat that lunch because they provided tamales. And they were so good and so big. And then the cookies went so quickly. I felt bad because there was one guy that wanted some cookies and he was saving it for afterwards. And then all the cookies were gone because we have a bunch of cookie monsters at work. Speaking of which, I did release an Oreo video recently. I know my Oreo videos aren't why people are normally subscribed, but I do like to do occasional food reviews, specifically Oreos, because Oreos are like my favorite, favorite thing to be on, or one of my favorite things to eat. Um, I don't eat them as much because obviously I freaking pack on the weight like no other because I'm really good at putting on mass. 
and Oreos and milk, oof, that is a deadly combination. You can get to 2,000 calories real quick. Um, but I did release an Oreo video, so if you have any curiosity and something like that, let me know what you think. If not, be like, how dare you post an Oreo video on your channel? How dare you, how dare you ruin my eyes with something like that? I, I understand that as well. I did have another fit that I would like you guys to rate. Appreciate the feedback on the last two fits. Um, I'm, I think at this point, I'm still kind of uh, just sh showing you my initial like go-to fits. And then from there, we can kind of branch out and I can learn from what you guys say. But please let me know what you think of this fit. I think it's something somewhat interesting because not everybody's into all the same stuff. And sometimes people, you know, take pride in their style and all that and how they dress. And I didn't really do that for the longest time until like maybe college I thought about what I should be wearing. And now, especially now, I'm like... You know, I try to look nice, especially like going to work and all that stuff now that I'm not having to wear a uniform every day. So it's, I'm a little bit more self-conscious about what I wear, but I have a system in my closet where I always wear the leftmost shirt and then I match like the pants and shoes or whatever. And then I go to the next shirt and then I kind of just go through that cycle. So, and I have a lot of basic earthy colors, so it's pretty easy to match everything as well. Next, we did try a plant-based restaurant for work. So my little, my team at work treats us to a meal like every other week. And so we tried a plant-based uh, place and I had an all plant-based burrito and then we had all plant-based like cheesecake and like all this stuff. It was very interesting. I, I honestly wanted to try their drinks there because they looked like they had really cool cocktails, but obviously, you know, I worked for lunch. We weren't going to get turned that early. It was a Friday, but we had to wait a little bit before we got that turned. Um, but I thought it was cool. I think it's definitely a place I want to bring mystery now, just so we can kind of explore. And it seems like they have some good other decent options there. But let me know if you've ever been to like a vegan spot and what you thought. I've had some pretty good like vegan burgers and vegan meals. Is it my go-to or like ideal thing? No, but it's every now and then it's it's not bad. And if like somebody in your group would like really appreciate it, I think it's it's something worthwhile. Now we're going to number 16. That is such a cute tarantula. I'm going to be honest. I already showed off my vault binder. If I didn't show it earlier, I'll have showed what I paid. I think I got this one off of Amazon, so not bad at all. If you want to get in your feels listening to music, which I actually do that quite often, if you didn't watch, I, if you're like me and didn't watch the Grammys, they did finally post some of the performances, and one that got me really emotional was Tracy Chapman and Luke Combs doing Fast Car. I know Luke Combs kind of repopularized the song from the 80s, but it is such a beautiful song. Watching those two sing together, it got me like teary-eyed. Didn't shed any tears, so similar to my ha Hero Academia, got me teary-eyed, but didn't make me actually cry. But if you just if you like that song, or maybe it's overplayed because I think it played on the radio a bunch. I don't really listen to the radio for that reason specifically, because it'll kill if you really like a song. The radio will play it into its death. But watch that performance really great. And then the only other performance that I watched was Miley Cyrus, because I guess she has never gotten a Grammy. I do really like Miley Cyrus. She's been through a lot of different, uh, you know, changes and everything like that. But at the end of the day, I've always liked her. I mean, she, when I was a kid growing up, I had a crush on her and, you know, she's come a long way. She finally got her Grammy, which is crazy to think she had never gotten one to this point. She performed Flowers. It's not one of my favorite songs by her. I still like it. But uh, yeah, she just was on stage and did her thing. And you know what? You just you just got to respect it. She definitely had like a, you know, an older like 80s punk or not 80s punk, like 80s rock look. So that was that was kind of cool. Also, I've been listening to Teddy Swims for a while. I'm sure you've heard his voice, but I didn't realize like I was listening to Teddy Swims. Like I've been saving a bunch of his songs, but I didn't realize I was actually listening to them to them to him. And then at work, someone's like, oh, Teddy Swims. And then so this past weekend, I kind of didn't do like a full discography dive, but I, I looked into some of his songs and yeah, found out that I like a lot of his songs. So actually need a few more cards to get through these last talking points and then we'll be good to go. So I need to restock. Also, I do just want to warn you all that it is very dangerous to look, fill a binder like this preoccupied or multitasking because there is a chance that you can miss a slot and then you have to move the entire set, which is I would never wish that on my worst enemy because it's so miserable having to take every single card and move it once to the left or once to the right. Uh, but I'm, I think I'm doing all right. And a lot of these I have the reverse hollows for. So it's been pretty easy to keep track of. And this low kicks is quite nice. I just watched Lil Dark Fury do a video on a low kicks deck. So that's kind of cool. And I did not fall for the mistake 
This is a deck exclusive, so I will put this one at the back. The way I do master sets is I do everything that you can get from a pack up front, and then any extras I put in the back. I don't try to collect all the extras, because sometimes it can be a lot to keep track of. So even though websites are getting better and better at keeping track of everything. And then finally, this past weekend, I did go to the Santa Monica, like 3rd Street Promenade, Promenade. And it, it was fun. I'd never been to that mall. Mystery had been up there before on her previous hot girl walks. Um, so let me know if you've ever heard of a hot girl walk. So basically, it's a gathering of like hundreds of women. And then they go for a walk for a few miles. You know, make friends, do whatever. Usually some like some company or something's hosting it. And then you just do a few miles and then that's it. And it's called a hot girl walk. So yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. But it seemed like she enjoyed it. So I'm glad... I think she got a free bag or something from Lululemon. So I think if anything, that's worth it. It doesn't, there's like no entry fee or anything like that. So you just gather and walk and she's made a, a good friend from it so far. So I think that's well worth it. But after the hot girl walk, met her at the mall in Santa Monica. We walked around there and did our own hot couple walk. I don't know what you would call that, but maybe just us walking. And um, there's like a mall, inside mall at the end. And then the majority of it's outside, like walking the, uh, down kind of like a strip and it kind of reminded me of uh, Europe a lot of the the malls are like that where they're open and like you could easily fit vehicles there but vehicles aren't allowed to drive there so unless probably for an emergency so Bramble Gas that's the name I forgot the name of that evolution I have to be completely honest with you and so also during that time we had was it chicken and waffles at this one place which they were okay I thought the chicken was really good the waffles were kind of average and then we had like some uh, I almost called them soaked fries. I guess loaded is the term. I forget the term that they used on their menu, but we had some loaded fries, which are pretty good as well. So that actually concludes all of my talking points. I should gather more this week. I think my next video will be another opening and then more mail. And then by then I'll probably be completing another set. So I'll do another complete set video. And then who knows what will happen in between. I will continue to maintain my four day gap videos except this oreo review i think i did after three days so i'll give you guys this video hopefully after a few days after that one so not the full four days but because i've stuck an oreo video in between i don't want to screw you guys for too long so it is actually oh and then we can go right into the wo chin look at that so at least i put one of the cards that i got today in the mail in here so i want to thank you all so much for watching please let me know what you have going on um what you're collecting what you're doing it doesn't even have to be you know pokemon card co Pokemon card related. It could be a video game that you're playing or just something nerdy in general or, you know, something other than that. Yeah, just let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know any feedback and have a good one.